Well, hello, everybody. I was waiting for <laughs> the internet to catch up with me, but how you doing tonight? What y'all got going on? Oh, look at yeah, We're back together again. It is Wednesday, 7 p.m. East Coast time with Christopher Allen and Issues of Men right here on Star Talk 365 Radio. Hey, Chris. Good evening. How you doing, Miss B? Better than I deserve. I'm excited to hear you said you had a surprise for me for the top of your night. I am on. No, I'm not. I'm not on pins and needles, but I'm excited. I'm excited. If this is your first time joining me, I am Miss B Positive and Miss B, the CEO of Storm Talk 365 Radio. But you can find myself for the other podcasts to help you to talk to the storms in your life. www.stormtalk365radio.com. I'm also the CEO of Storm Radio 24 7, where you can find us talking about the arts, entertainment, business and much, much more. So again, tonight, Christopher Allen has come to you with issues of men. Um, and he says, a surprise. Chris, what's the topic tonight? Welcome, welcome, everyone. Uh, the topic of tonight's discussion is damaged goods. And uh, we're going to get into the definition of that, um, damaged men. And I do want to say that this is just a phrase that, is, that was pretty much coined a uh, phrase that is used to describe the actions and behaviors of someone who uh, exhibits, uh, they have the symptoms of damaged behavior or um, things of that nature. So I'm not calling anybody damaged. I just want to put it out there. Um, no damaged men, no damaged women, anything like that. But if you exhibit some of these behaviors and if you answer yes to some of these questions we're going to ask you this evening, um, you have some work to do. Definitely got some work to do. Mm, got some work to do. So how are we going to enter into this discussion? What's the first thing you want to bring up? Um, the first thing that I want to bring up is let's break down what damaged is. Um, when something is damaged, um, its value, its usefulness, its uh, normal function, uh, it's not 100%. It's impaired to some degree. Um, and a person that's regarded or feels inadequate, they're not enough. Um, when we operate from this damaged or hurtful, fearful place or have that perspective living and you know, moving through life, especially for me, um, I definitely can speak from my experience. I totally missed the mark. When I say I missed the mark, mm. I say that um, you don't think, you don't respond, and you don't see things clearly. Mm. Um, and even in, in positive moments, you know, you are thinking the worst. You're not optimistic, you're pessimistic. Um, you're almost in a state of protecting yourself. Um, and, and, when, and when we're in this state, um, we definitely do more harm um, for our lives and we definitely do more harm than good. And this definitely makes us inefficient. It makes us ineffective as individuals um, in business and also in our uh, intimate relationships. Um, and the question that I wanted to pose this evening to the fellas is how did we get there? And what occurred? Um, and why did we stay in this condition so long? Mm. Um, so hold up yes I like that how did we get there how and why are we there so long you know I'm hoping women are paying attention to this too because not only do we you know we're talking about save our black men um, but some of the women need to understand <clears throat> How did those men get there? And why are they staying so long? Could it be that something that the women are contributing to? And hmm. it's not just a male or female issue when men have issues because healthy relationships require two people. Absolutely. And I always say there's a why behind the what. And I really think this episode, women should pay attention to what you're saying because they could be the why behind the what, what's damaging them. So I, I just had to say, I am paying attention. I'm trying to share it, but those are some good points. Thank you so much. And uh, again, that, that was 
I would say that's a great, that's an awesome response because um, <clears throat> in my experience, um, in my conversation with men through the age uh, and young men, you know, starting from the age of five through um, 16, there's always been one major situation or several psychological or emotional or traumatic situations that have occurred in that man's life that hindered um, him from being able to operate and function at full capacity. Um, and most of those, I would say, sometimes come through uh, damaged relationships, um, some type of traumatic situation that happened to him, you know, when he was younger. Um, and it just, you know, kind of since then, you know, it wreaked habit, you know, in the types of behaviors, the type of relationships he's gotten into. Um, even our communication, our trust, um, not being able to believe in ourselves, not being able to trust in ourselves, um, situations that we have, may have lost control of or um, something that we, you know, we just didn't have control over. We weren't strong enough. Uh, we weren't, uh, I'm trying to think of some more situations in my head right now. I'm going a little bit blank, but, um, and when we have a traumatic situation, uh, Miss B, uh, what normally happens to us is that um, as a young man, and I would definitely say for young women, is that we, even before I start the next, let's talk about validation. Mm. Um, something happened to us and we didn't have somebody there to help protect us. Our parents weren't there or whoever wasn't there. And uh, something happened. As young men and young, young women at a young age, we need somebody to validate uh, who we are, sometimes our worth, um, who we are, our worth, um, love. Um, and prior to being hurt or being traumatized, you know, we needed that love and validation. And But after being hurt, um, then we need like a massive amount of validation. And sometimes if we don't receive that validation, we'll go seeking validation. Um, whether that be love in the wrong places, um, going to the streets to find that father figure, that um, uh, definitely get into some negative things because something was there, that void was not being filled. It wasn't, um, that healing didn't occur. And so we definitely, we would seek that validation and we would, you know, I, I want to tell the men this evening that you definitely won't find it through, um, you won't find it in the streets. You won't find that healing. You won't find that validation uh, between a woman's legs. You won't find it in drugs. You won't find it uh, through self-sabotage. Um, whether that be relationships, it could be jobs, it could be anything that's good for you that you feel that you don't deserve. Um, you know, you know, and you won't find it by building a wall around yourself or disassociating yourself from people or things uh, because of how you feel about yourself. Um, and I'm going to get to some of these things a little bit later, but one of the problems that we have as men will be going through these situations in this be and those who are viewing is that a lot, most of us won't admit, um, we won't communicate that we're going through something. Uh, that we're hurt, that something happened, uh, we need help. Um, a lot of times we're too prideful, uh, egotistical, we're shamed, or we feel that um, we can handle it. And in many occasions, I know for myself, I, when I, at a certain point in time, I was like, you know, I'm good. Um, Miss B, I'm good. Don't worry about me, I'm good. I got this. And, and when, we, when we really need that help, or we need somebody to say, hey, bro, sit down. I know you're going through something. 
talk to them. And um, this is why, you know, one of the reasons why I created the issues of men um, and why I have a mentorship and program with young, uh, young males um, and even adult males um, because of that. Um, you need somebody that you can confide in and trust in and to talk to somebody to give you good advice, not biased advice, uh, advice that's going to steer you in a, another direction that you actually need to go. Um, and again, we need to ask ourselves, fellas, when we're in the state that we're not communicating, we're going through something and we don't seek the help. We're not being responsible for it. How, uh, ask yourself, has this selfishness, has this fool, where has this foolishness gotten us? Where has this self-absorbedness gotten us? Where has this supposed inner strength taken us? And if you look back, it's, you, you, we haven't gone anywhere. It, uh, we haven't, we're sitting under the same dark cloud that rains on us every day. And we just keep walking in it. We walk in it. We walk in it. When we do have an umbrella, open the umbrella. There is help available, but you know, again, you have to seek it. Um, and as I said a little bit earlier, um, when we ask ourselves, how did we get here? But another important question too is, how do you know? How do you know, how do you understand that if you are uh, a damaged man, you're damaged goods? So I'm going to ask a few questions uh, this evening, and if you, I know if you answer definitely more, if you say yes to more than two of these questions, um, you definitely need to seek some help or talk about what's going on with you as an individual or person. Um, so Ms. B, uh, I want you to kind of pay attention to some of these questions that I'm asking. And, you know, if you want to chime in at any time. Um, and then I guess I, I wanted to, you know, ask you, have you um, had experiences uh, with damaged men or has anyone ever considered you to be damaged or uh, a broken man, a broken woman? Yes, and yes, and definitely yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. seriously, I mean, it just, you know, I always say uh, there's no such thing as a failure, it's just different levels of success. Uh, there's no such thing as being perfection, perfect, it's just different levels of imperfection. So all of us are so-called damaged in some way to different levels, been exposed to something that we haven't gotten over, don't even know we've been exposed to and need to get over. Mm -hmm. So um, not to take away from the topic, but yes, I have run across um, men um, because they all have issues, whatever they are, whatever, you know, how they, you know, show it. <clears throat> My first um, marriage, um, Damaged goods. You have to consider the source. There's a what behind every why. And when I started looking at his father and mother's relationship, how his father, I mean, there's a, everybody comes from something and everybody is hurt from something. And as far as um, myself, yes, I came into that marriage being hurt because I didn't want to marry him. <laughs> That's a long story. But, um, the second one, which is I consider the marriage, my real husband, um, I came in because of the hurt that I experienced with my past relationships, you know, and um, what I expected to happen happened. You know, he was damaged because we actually had a um, podcast that we were trying to do, but his job hasn't allowed us to do it. But um, marriage first with Mr. Allen, um, Miss B, and he confessed that he. Um, has some issues on those podcasts. So um, 
this topic is relevant to everybody because when it comes to relationships, there's nothing we come into it with that has not been touched by our past, whether it's childhood, um, even professional stuff can cause problems with personal relationships. So, um, so we're all damaged good. That's powerful. And it definitely seems like, you know, you had the realization and understanding of that um, and having that self-acceptance of it. And that's a, that's a big part of, um, for my, in, in my experience, the healing process. Um, but I'm definitely going to get into some of these questions. And uh, definitely, um, if you answered yes to two of these, then I, I'm not going to consider say that you are a damaged person. Um, but you definitely need uh, help with cope, uh, learning how to cope with what's going on with you, um, start the healing process. Um, so I'm just going to start with that aspect. So my first question to you is, uh, do you constantly experience high, high anxiety or feel overwhelmed? It really doesn't matter what situation it is. Um, are you constantly arguing with loved ones uh, or friends over small things? Are you consistently trying to prove yourself even when you don't need to? Uh, do you feel like someone is trying to take advantage of you? Um, do you have the inability to maintain healthy and uh, close relationships? Um, do you self-sabotage relationships, jobs, or anything that has anything that's, uh, I would say that, anything where you're coming up, you're on the up and up and you're being blessed with something um, and you can't accept it. Um, are you socially withdrawn? Are you a controlling person? Um, are you finding yourself doing impulsive and self-destructive behaviors? Do you have uncontrollable or reactive thoughts? Do you feel depressed, um, hopelessness, despair, guilt, or shame on a consistent basis? Um, and I know I mentioned this earlier, this is like a combination of things, but again, do you feel undeserving of good people and good things in your life? Do you dislike or hate yourself? Do you have consistent mood swings? There are moody people but there are moody people. Uh, you'll be happy. Uh, you'll be happy in one, one minute and then the next one, you know, you go from zero to 100. You, you flip it on somebody or you're just terribly sad about something. And then don't know why it, it just happens. Uh, do you take drugs or alcohol to drown out your emotional pain uh, and your issues? Um, and again, if you have answered yes to two or more of these questions, um, definitely, you know, I would just say that, you know, seek some type of help. And I always said knowing is half the battle. And fellas know who ball players are. It's, let's, let's consider the game of basketball. Now the ball's in your court. You play your role on the team. And this is team you, this is team life. Um, it's your responsibility and no one else's help. I mean, no one else's responsibility um, for you to seek help. This is your responsibility. Um, begin your healing. And I would definitely say we need to start, that you need to start putting in that work today. If you're always on that team and you're the last person picked, you, you know, and you picked in life. So you definitely want to get better. Um, you when you want to have some practice to get better. So you'll be able to put yourself in positions that you were better uh, for yourself. Um, and you're better for your team. You're better for team life, team friend, team relationship, team job. You'll be better in all those things. 
and I know a lot of people probably say, okay, yeah, Chris, how now that we have some type of analysis and self-assessment, how do we become better? How do we learn to cope? How do we learn to deal with this? How do we get better? Um, Miss B, from your personal experience, uh, do you um, have any life sharing experiences that that you can uh, tell the females or tell the viewership right now of how they may get better or coming out of that broken state? Wow. <clears throat> First and foremost, you have to recognize that you are broken. Most of the time, that's something that people just don't want to admit. They got some, they got issues. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Like you said, I got this. Mm -hmm. A lot of women, ain't nothing wrong with me. It's that man. Yeah, it's that man. It's that woman. My mama's daddy, my baby daddy, everybody else's fault. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm good. So um, for the women out there, look in the mirror. You know, stop pointing fingers at everybody else. Understand that there's something in your life that may have impacted you neg negatively that's causing you to respond negatively to other people. And one of the things that I you know, picked up on as far as women, he mentioned self-sabotaging and you have something good. You know, just like me, I told you I came into this relationship and, you know, I was not used to being treated as good as he treated me. And so I had issues with, why are you so good to me? Why are you so? Why are you doing this? So, my suggestion to women is that one point right there: stop self-sabotaging yourself. Recognize that maybe there is somebody out there who thinks you're worthy of being treated like a queen, and then start treating yourself like a queen. So, you know, I'm a woman of faith, and I'm not going to get into that. But you are who you believe you are. Mm. And you get what you believe you deserve. What are you believing for yourself? Are you allowing other people's treatment of you to dictate or validate your self-worth? Think about that. So as for me, how I get over, because something is always happening in your life and you have to understand, okay, this is a card that I was dealt. How am I going to get out of this hand? So don't take a long the past with you because there's enough happening in your life right now. And my last statement is your past prepared you for today and today is your future. Everything that you do today is your future. You're creating situations and circumstances that are gonna have consequences that you're gonna have to deal with in your future. So you are walking in your future right now. Are you destroying your future because you don't know how to appreciate yourself and you're waiting for other people to validate you? Are you waiting for other people to make you happy, which is temporary when you should be joyful and be excited about who you are? So that's my my take on that. That was that was well said, beautifully said, beautifully said. So, I mean, that I used to make comments and make statements to people, um, but they always told me that I made statements in a condescending or some type of. I, they felt like I was speaking or talking down to them, which I wasn't. But um, and that's how they received it. And of course, that doesn't go well. So I had to change my approach, um, figure out how I was going, you know, how I was going to speak and talk to people for them to be receptive of what I was saying without taking any offense. So that was, that was awesome. Well, thank you. I, um, I was Tell talking us. about communication issues, so that 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 means a lot to me. What? <laughs> yeah, they said I have communication issues, and I need to be careful because the very people that may be waiting to take me to another level, I could turn them off. That's how I talk. So, and I think I have to consider the source. It, even with that, Miss um, B, we all have there's all different types of people out there. We have to consider and meet someone where they're at and take it from there. It's not, I don't, a lot of people always say, just like as an example, uh, they talk about, oh, that's fake news or this is that and the third because it's something, it's the truth a lot of times and they don't want um, people to catch wind of it or they don't want you to hear it. They don't want to hear it. 
So the first thing they're going to do is try to shut it down as quickly as possible. So um, I've come out of that place years ago and just meeting people where they are um, and learning how to maneuver together. There has to be that compromise for conversation. Absolutely. Um, so fellas, what I would like to share with you this evening as far as how do we get better? How do we cope? How do we learn? How do we come out of this? It's something that's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time. Um, I'm just saying like a vehicle and you were that vehicle. The easiest way from point A to point, point B is to go through it. Go through your issues, not around it. Don't drive around no mountains. Don't drive around the woods to, to get where you need to go. Take that straight path and uh, deal with it directly and why it's happening, why it's going on. Don't su don't suppress it. Don't push it down um, because it's going to come back out sooner or later in a negative form or way that it's going to hurt you and other people. I, and I always say, um, being conscious of being aware of your issue or problem, um, it gives you more control as an individual person of how you're responding, how you're acting, um, and even how you're presenting this uh, to people. You have better control over it once you are conscious of it and you know it. Oh, okay, like oh my gosh, like I curse people out too much, or somebody this morning said, they said good morning to me. And I was like, well, why are you speaking to me? Like, that was like the worst response you could possibly do or give. But once you're aware of what you're doing uh, and knowing that it's harmful for you and it's harmful for other people, having that conscious aspect of it will actually be able to start putting you in a better place for you to respond or be able to do better. Practice is perfect. Just in my opinion, that was from my experience, y'all. Um, <laughs> I always say, do things uh, when you're in a hurt place and you're going through something. Um, do things that you love to do. Um, if you like drawing, um, you like writing, get, get some composition books, get some pens and pads and do something um, that is going to keep your... Um, energy, keep your positivity up, keep your, um, keep, just keep you in a good place and a good mood. That normally usually always helps. Um, I have a platform uh, that I'm still building and working on. I had a few workshops in it. It was called, um, uh, oh my God, I can't even think of it right now, but I know by the time I end of the show, I'll, I'll think of what it is. And it used art as a means to uh, poetry. It used uh, poetry and I used um, drawing, I used deference as a means and a way to um, to help people to take the issues and problems and transfer it to something else and be able to throw it away. You can burn it, you could do whatever that is um, and begin and start there. A lot of people said that, that that this aspect helped them. It gave them a place and a platform to finally exhale and breathe and pull it out of them. Um, another thing that always made me uh, feel good or come out of the place that I was in is helping someone in some form or another. Being of service to another always made me feel good. Um, so that was a very you know, great thing that I was able to do. Um, if you're able to forgive mm. uh, whoever has caused you to harm or issue a problem, um, forgive them. And also, if you've done something to someone else and it caused you to have, um, you know, you're carrying around that weight and that guilt over the years, go back to that person and talk to them. Ask for forgiveness. Um, and again, a lot of men don't think it cry scream at the top of your lungs just get it out get it out it's okay it's just a means to release fellas it really is um i want you to also understand that um understanding that your past 
is not, um, it does not define you. It doesn't define your present or your future. Um, everything that you got yourself into, the way you feel about yourself, you can change that. But you know, you can you have, you have to start today. Um, Self affirmations, uh, meditation, prayer, absolutely helps. I, I would definitely say that. Um, working out, exercising. And as you're, you know, even if you, you know, afterwards you take a shower, I would breathe, I would breathe in positivity. I would breathe in love. I would breathe in what I'm trying to change and breathe out all the negative emotions and feelings that I have inside. And it just felt like everything was going down the drain. So again, this is another, this is another form of transference. Um, accepting, accepting your past and accepting yourself is a big, um, no matter what happens to you, um, no matter what you go through, Accepting what happens and just knowing that, hey, I might not have had control over the situation at the time when this happened. Um, yes, it did happen to me, but it's not something that you need to carry. And having that acceptance is a big part of uh, moving forward in your life. I've also read a lot of, um, Miss Biala, I read a lot of books. I read a lot of um, self healing books, um, stories, memoirs, and different things to also see how other people have dealt with um, coming out of some of their uh, issues and coming out of being hurt, damaged, coming out of being in that broken place. Um, and one thing I tell people all the time too is change your narrative. Mm. Don't keep speaking that same story over and over and over again you, you know you definitely have to change your narrative and your story start speaking life speaking joy speaking change into your life um and that's always a great it's, it's a wonderful thing um get out of your head sometimes we create a lot of situations we create things that are very harmful um, or we're assuming the worst before it actually happens. Um, sometimes we have to get out of our head uh, and stop responding, um, stop acting neg on, on negative thoughts and things of that nature. Just because the thoughts come in your head doesn't mean that it's true. And again, like I've learned to detach. Um, Sometimes we definitely just need a chill pill. We need time to ourselves just to relax, just to exhale um, and not carry some of those things. If something does happen, um, detach ourselves from that. Like that has nothing to do with me. That has nothing to do with my growth, um, development, um, where I'm going. That situation ain't got nothing to do with me. And the last thing I wanted to say in regards to that, um, to the viewers, and Ms. B, I, I kind of want you to speak on this too. Let's let's talk about triggers. Let's talk about staying out of the places um, that remind you of your situation. Take yourself away from individuals and people that trigger. Uh, your pain trigger um, your issues or what you're going through. Um, you definitely need to step away those step away from those people. Change your surroundings. Change those people that you're around. Um, and I promise you that how you're responding, reacting on a daily and negative basis, in time it will go away. I, I, I definitely will tell you that. Um, when I stopped hanging out with people who brought out the worst in me um, or brought out certain things in me that should have never even came out, it should have even been here with me as I'm moving forward. Um, 
when I change that aspect of my life, those people, um, change those situations, everything got better, much better. Uh, so so, so uh, Ms. B, could you talk a little bit about that? Talk about triggers, talk about things that, um, that would keep yourself or keep the ladies in a negative place? You know, they always say you are who you associate with and mm -hmm. you can't keep doing the same thing and expect different results. As far as a female is concerned, and I'm not talking down, judging, I'm merely making a suggestion. You want to elevate the caliber of men you attract, then you need to elevate the caliber of women you associate with. It does not mean that you're better. It's just you want something different. Mm -hmm. Everybody can relate to people in success. Let's just talk about um, football players, basketball players, people in sports. And they grew up in the hood and their talent got recognized and they moved on to get signed a contract. And, you know, there's a lot of instances I could talk about. I'm just gonna say in general, but they couldn't leave the hood. It wasn't that they didn't, they needed to forget where they came from or, you know, thought they were better, but you have to do things differently to get different results. Absolutely. And so for you females who want to do something different, you've gone on to college and you've got a degree and you have an opportunity to do anything you want to do financially. And yet your girlfriends are still working at Walmart and everywhere you go, you got to pick up the tab. And instead of being the same way all the time when you're with them, you talk one way, act one way, dress another way. Then when you go into corporate world, you put on your nice clothes and you're talking without ebonics. And eventually it's going to clash. You're going to have to make a choice. Just like the men in sports, they couldn't leave the hood alone. So a lot of them, you know, got arrested for riding their buddies around, having drugs in the car, wrong place, wrong time with a gun and all kinds of foolishness. And so... The triggers for me would be for you all to stop being around the crowd that gets you in trouble. Stop being around the same friends you had with the man that beat you up because it's going to remind you of how he treated you. There are a lot of things you can do to change your situations and circumstances, but you just have to make the choice that you want something better for yourself. Absolutely. I agree with you thousands of percent. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think, you know, um, just to final thought for this evening is um, when you're making this change, it can actually be this easy, fellas. Just remember that um, you remember when we dropped a bowl of cereal or we dropped something on the floor and something spilled on the floor. Um, but we set out some trash and uh, the raccoons or possums went and tore it up and, uh, you know, you might have feelings at first and you get mad and everything like that. And afterwards, we just went out, you know, we went, we cleaned up the bowl, um, we cleaned up the trash, um, we addressed it and it's done. It's just that easy sometimes to move forward and move on. Um, and again, I just look at it as the same process. Why, well, why would you want to hold on to a cactus your whole life? And then you expect other people to um, want to hug and hold you too. I don't want those thorns. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> um, and I also just wanted to say, realize that people say God, some people say source, some people say universe, they, whatever you want to call, call it. God is always working for your greater good. 
sometimes we're going to go through some things to get better. But again, it's your perception and choice. Um, he's always working for your greater good. But you must be open to receiving um, that greater good, receiving that help, even if it's not from the individual or group of persons uh, or people that you wanted to come from. Mm-hmm. He, he, he's always there and around trying to show, trying to. And one thing I would say that there's been a blessing in my life is when so many things happened i knew he was trying to get my attention tapping me on that shoulder bruh son i love you if you don't stop doing what you're doing you're gonna gonna be in a world of hurt so i would just say let go of your pain let go of your past and it will let go of you so that would be my final thought for this evening, Miss B. I'm and, not- I, and so I hope and help. I mean, I'm really hopeful that these are able to help someone this evening. I'm going to go back and view it a little bit later. I hope this helps. Would you do us the honor of, in the comment section, I posted it on your page. But in the comments section, could you list those things that the questions that you asked? Because mm-hmm. even though you said it, it you know a lot of adults retain stuff when they read it. So gotcha. if you just put in the comment section um, questions to ask yourself, and if you ask it more than two, please consider seeking help. And just Absolutely. list them if you would. Um, copy and paste if you have to. But I thought they were very pertinent questions, both for males and females. So it's a nice episode. You just keep getting gooder and gooder. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I was like, I trying to put in some things um, that are very pertinent in our daily lives as men and as women and things that we can learn and grow from each other. Um, I definitely think that... Um, and kind of get our, I'm not taking any attention away from anything that's going on now, but even as you're going through what you're going through now, because I know it put us put, put us all with the uh, killing of George Floyd and, um, and other uh, men and women, um, black men, you know, uh, all over the world right now. Um, this is just in our progressing and moving forward that we'll have something else to be able to help us move forward, even to what we're going through right now, in addition to what we have on a personal level right now. So um, I'm definitely going to put those questions in there. And um, and, uh, for next week's show, I'm going to tell you what it is this week. (laughs) You surprised me because you really didn't know what you was going to talk about this week, did you? I was between two situations at the time and I was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and choose what I want to talk about. Cause sometimes whether going one way or the other, there's always something that happens that say, uh, uh-uh, uh, that's the one right there. So oh, no. that's what I had to do. So, um, next week's uh, topic for conversation is ways of the top five ways that men mislead women. Top five ways that men mislead women. Ooh, okay. And uh, oh. yeah, it's, I didn't want to admit it myself. Fellas don't want to admit it, mm. but I got to share it so that women know um, and not be surprised or um, be sideswiped, totally like taken off their feet when they realize, like, oh my God, like this is. Not what I thought it was. Mm. So we're, we're, stuff there, Chris. So we're going to get into that next week. Um, and again, I want to um, let everyone know uh, to become a guest on the show um, or provide a topic of conversation. Um, email me at issuesofmen at gmail.com. In the subject section, just please put uh, the subject of your conversation and then just tell me a little bit about 
um, what you want me to talk about, because sometimes I don't want to assume or misperceive uh, what you're talking about, uh, even though you put the subject in a subject line. So um, I would definitely give you um, a shout out on the show um, in regards to uh, that. And uh, also, you know, depending on what it is and our conversation prior to uh, this next week's show, uh, when we uh, pick your topic of conversation, uh, we would like maybe we would like to have you as a guest on the show. Um, and again, that's issues of men at gmail.com. Uh, you can also uh, check me out on issues of men on Instagram and author Christopher Allen at gmail.com, author Christopher Allen on Instagram as well. All right. So, Sonia Peters Allen says, awesome, perfect message. So. Thumbs Thank up you. for you. All right, everybody. Yeah, this is B, Positive in this B with the cutie pie, Chris Allen. Yeah, I like to say that because you know what? If you didn't know, um, he has a lot in his bio. Please look at his bio. He is a model. That's why I keep referencing his looks. It's not because I'm a cougar or anything, but he is a model, an author, a poet. Uh, he has a lot going on, and I'm just so blessed to have him allow us to share his new podcast on Storm Talk 365. We are um, faith-based podcast ministry. We are also on Storm Radio 24-7, where we talk about business and the arts. And Chris is coming on over to Storm Radio 24-7 next month. He's going to be helping us to become an author. He's going to be doing a podcast, Author 101. Is that right? Is that the name of it? That is correct. Okay. I'm just, I got so much going on. But yes, he is blessing me with so many of uh, his messages and I'm you know blessed to be able to share we are I heard iTunes Spotify many many more our videos are for your convenience but we really focus on sharing it as a podcast uh storm talk 365 radio.com or on any of your favorite listening platforms so Chris I thank you so much I'm looking You're welcome to you next week you have a blessed blessed week and thank you so much again for that message and don't forget to add those to the comments okay I'm gonna do that immediately all right, everybody. Bless you. Have a blessed night. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye.